In this video, we're going to go over working with intelligent fixtures or DMX moving heads in the Vixen Preview. The moving head shape in the Vixen Preview requires 3D support to render the fixture and the beam. This support is only available in the OpenGL Vixen Preview. It is possible older graphics cards may have issues with the OpenGL. I'm going to create a new preview and then enable the OpenGL support. Next, I'm going to show how to add an existing fixture to the preview. First step is to select the fixture in the tree and then select the Intelligent Fixture Smart Object. And then draw your fixture on the preview. When we're done, we want to switch to the Select Toolbar option so we don't accidentally create more fixtures. Selecting the fixture causes the Intelligent Fixture properties to be displayed in the Property Grid. I am going to move the fixture down to the bottom and center of the preview so that I can better demonstrate the beam. Here is the preview in action using the default settings. There are three settings that control the appearance of the beam. The beam length, the beam transparency, and the beam width multiplier or radius. The beam length defaults to the height of the window or height of the background image if one is being used. Let's change the beam length to 20% and observe the results. We can see the beam length is shorter now. Note the position of the camera or the viewpoint can impact the perception of the length. The beam width or radius is eight times bigger at the top versus at the bottom. Let's change it to four times and observe the results. You can see we get a much skinnier beam using the four times multiplier. I've added a background image to the preview so that we can configure the beam transparency. The beam transparency defaults to 40%. Let's change it to 80% and observe the results. At 80% transparency, more of the background image shows through the beam. I added a gobo effect to the fixture and this activated the legend. The legend is intended to give feedback on fixture functions that are not easily represented graphically in the preview. G indicates a gobo function is active, and 4 is the current channel value indicating the selected gobo. The legend can be hidden by configuring show legend to false. There are pan and tilt start position and stop position angles. These angles help ensure the preview matches the real hardware. The defaults for these values were entered in the intelligent fixture wizard. If your fixture supports zoom, there is a toggle to control whether the fixture zooms from narrow to wide or vice versa. There are two supported mounting positions of the fixture, bottom and top. Top is used when mounting the fixture upside down. Let's change the mounting position to top and observe the results. I move the fixture to the top of the preview. Here is a top mounted fixture in action. Oftentimes when the fixture is mounted upside down, we need to invert the pan and tilt movement direction. There are settings to invert the movement. I'm going to add a second fixture mounted upside down so we can compare inverted movement versus not inverted movement. Here we have two top mounted fixtures. The one in the middle of the preview has both the pan and the tilt directions inverted. I'm going to drive both fixtures with the exact same set position effect. Note the fixtures tilt start positions are opposite each other. Additional fixtures can be created through the preview. Without selecting a fixture in the elements tree, drawing a fixture with the smart object will activate the Intelligent Fixture Wizard. Here I'm going to create five fixtures. The first fixture is created where I rubber banded. 
the others are created at the top of the preview. Finally, additional fixtures can also be created by selecting Intelligent Fixture from the Elements dropdown and then selecting the plus button. One last setting to show you in the Intelligent Fixture Properties is the linked element. Here I have copied and pasted the fixture graphic so that both graphics are linked to the same element, Fixture 1. I'm going to change the second one to be Fixture 2. This concludes this video. Check out our other Intelligent Fixture videos on setting up fixtures and fixture effects.